We plugged it. Oh, holy moly. We ain't doing that no more. I have been lying to my customers. Sorta. Of. So I was in the process of interviewing the kiln operator that dries our lumber when he told me something that blew my mind. We're going to uncover a truth about kiln dried lumber moisture content that might surprise you. So while interviewing our friend Eric about this beautiful mixed hardwood paneling you see right here, he's quite proud of this batch by the way, he told me something that challenged the way I think about kiln dried lumber. He told me that kiln drying the lumber won't guarantee it won't regain, won't guarantee it won't, won't guarantee its moisture. He told me that kiln drying doesn't guarantee the lumber won't regain its moisture. He told me that kiln drying the lumber won't you may or may not have already heard this, but the process we thought was the final say in the moisture content of lumber isn't foolproof. And now I'm going to briefly explain why I was wrong. Then I'm going to show you what he and Kendall says about kiln dried lumber moisture content, along with some other things they talked about that I found interesting and that I thought that you should know. So stick around. We got something for you today, five. So. It doesn't like you. It doesn't like you. It doesn't like me. Hey guys, we're here with Eric Hovland with, with Hovland Lumber, and he's gonna teach us a little bit about this tongue and groove paneling we just got in today. So how many how many years have you been doing this? Twenty. Twenty years. So you both have two decades. You guys got forty years combined. Eric Eric's been in the wood business a lot longer than you though. Yes. As a younger Kendall and a younger Eric. Did you guys see yourselves in the future being the masters of the lumber industry you are now? Well, I don't know if I'd say I'm a master of the lumber industry, but I don't think I saw where I'd be here now. I was a pretty young kid then. I was like see, 26. Just goes yeah. to show you, you could start anywhere. Yep. Yeah. At any it's time. Good. We all know that kiln dried lumber is far superior to air dried lumber in certain circumstances. But when it came to moisture content, I was telling my customers that in the process of drying the lumber in the kiln, it removes the moisture from the lumber and it also closes the cells or lumen in the fibers. But Google says I was right and Eric and Kendall seem to think I wasn't. So I'll just let Eric explain it to you and I'll let you decide. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below. What happens in that kiln drying um, a process that separates it from the rest and keeps the water out? Well, you, you draw the water out by just having the outside air dry, drier than, than the moisture content in the lumber. But it will take it back on again. It will, it will take the moisture back on again. It can, yeah. Okay. And does, it's, actually. Whatever it's... Uh, if you have a house... Regardless house, if it's kiln dried or air dried. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm, I was wrong then. Hygroscopic. I was telling people everything wrong. I looked it up too and the fact that I was told, you know, I, YouTube, right? <clears throat> so when, air, when you're drying it through the air, it releases the moisture, but... With kiln drying, it not only releases the free water and the bound water, it will also close those lumen cells so that it can't take on the moisture content it once had before. You can do that by thermally treating it and altering the cells. But that's, but so that's a different process. You can still, it can still take on water. It, it, it will, it, it will settle in whatever the relative humidity or the moisture content, the relative humidity of the environment. It'll settle It'll to whatever settle to that. Yeah. That's usually about, that's usually about 8%. 8%. Yeah. Eight, 8 to 10 in a, in a house. So. What's the longest piece of lumber you could dry in your kiln? 26 feet, maybe. Yeah. 26, 26, 28, somewhere in there. Yeah. But that is a nightmare to deal with. Yep. Trying to get that's a, some beams, long yeah, beams long beams. But trying to get a board that's twenty six yeah. feet long to dry. So is that why everyone keeps calling me and asking me for the forty inch wide uh, <laughs> piece mm -hmm. of lumber that doesn't exist anymore? Yeah. <laughs> well, you want that old girls thing? I'll have to get you a time machine. Yeah. <laughs> time machines or uh, the lumber stretcher? I don't know. Yeah, the lumber stretcher would be nice too. I'm still waiting on that. Lumber widener, lumber stretchener. 
don't yeah. know why. Well, it was, you probably ordered that from China. It's on its way over China, on the boat right yeah. now. It's going to take months. Months. Maybe years. Now my brain's running through whether or not Elon Musk can actually make that happen. <laughs> Maybe he's got a spaceship. So what makes this hardwood mixed lumber so special? Well, it's just a lot of character grade. Rustic mixed species, random widths, random lengths. So a lot of color variations and grains. Mm -hmm. All end matched. So I mean, you have virtually no waste. Fits together real nice. Lots of different colors. Yeah, I, I didn't know I had, a, I had a little red elm in here. A little There's bit. hickory. There's nine different species in here. Sure, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, white oak, red oak, black ash, white ash. Hickory, hackberry, red elm, soft maple, hard maple. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have a whole bunch more mixed species, especially red oak and white oak yeah. coming up here. I know we got another bundle out there already. Well, this is one of the nicest batches I've ever worked on, I think. Ah, this well, there we go. He's proud, craftsman that is proud of his work. How long does it take you to mill up this, your special um, batch? as compared to another size that is like, you know, on, on other batches that you've done that seem regular to you. Well, this Monday. This, this is the most work I, I can put into a pack of lumber. This is as far as I can take it. So I got the maximum amount of time into this one. Yeah. And that's because of the, the defecting and matching and, and patching some defects, some holes and a little, little of that extra work on it. What's a realistic time frame? Oh, with, I know. with drying, it's probably six months. Six months. Yeah. See, a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. They think you can bring wood to a kiln and it'll be done in two weeks. Yep. You can mill it up right after that and they'll have it back in a month. Well, that's not really possible. Not if no. you want it done right. No. And not if you want it done well. Yep. That's a yeah, big thing. Yeah, you just can't compress the drying time too much. It's going to take time. I mean, big commercial places do do that, mm -hmm. but the quality of the lumber that comes out isn't nearly as good, and the drying isn't, you know, isn't isn't as complete. So, so you're going to hear dry down to 12 to 15 percent. That's probably as realist, dry as you can, re realistically air dry. As dry as you can get it outside. So you're going to bring it in your house, and it's going to dry down to 10 or, or less, eight. or eight, eight to 10. So it's going to move. So you need to you need to dry it before you build your project need to dry it down to that eight or less before the flooring's milled, before it's installed, before the piece of furniture is built or the cabinets. So that's really and the then only... keep it there. Keep yeah, it that's yeah. really <laughs> the only benefits of kiln dry is the fact that it's conveniently dried down to what people's normal indoor uh, humidity, typical humidity yeah. level yeah. is. Yeah. It depends and though, if you don't air condition your house in the summer and then it gets pretty humid in the summer, but then it gets very dry in the winter. I mean, you definitely see some movement. This is also all lumber that you've kiln dried for me yep. too, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you run it through your kiln and you take a little longer than other people, which a lot of times yeah. I get a nice surprise. I mean, I've noticed. Yep, it's from, a slow. From thing. having you do it, that it's dried down nicer and there tends to be less stress on the wood. Probably because you didn't push it so hard in the kiln. Mm -hmm. So, it makes a big difference. I've had a lot of people yeah, say I that. I think so too that my lumber is really nice and that a little bit of that credit goes to you because you do a nice job on the drying and, and milling so what do you Straight. dry beams down to when you're using for structural things well well the same you know it's eight percent or less but uh, you can't really might not get it all the way to the center i say you can't really effectively dry a beam all the way down to the center. that's just that just that takes, takes time time oh and by the way if you're in the central Minnesota area, make sure you stop on down and check out a selection of kiln dried lumber. Hey, if you guys want, click on Kyle's face to see the next video. Click here, click here, <laughs> click this right here, click it right here.